three, two. Hold on, it's, it's uploading. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We live? Yep, we live. All right. Oh, <laughs> it seems to be some. Having some technical difficulties, it appears. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, I can right. hear you. All right. Check, check. All right. How you doing, man? Oh. You hear me, Martin? Yeah, I can hear you. You hear me? Okay, hold on right quick. <laughs> All right. So, sounds like... uh. I can hear you and hold on one sec. All right. Do you hear it, Echo? No. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, welcome to the journey of self-growth podcast episode number six thank you for having me thank you for having me i am kite the host of this event which was created so myself and others can share perspective on the concept of self-growth i hope in hopes that sorry in hopes that others um Hold on, let me start over. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Journey of Self Growth podcast, episode number six. I am Kite, the host of this event, which was created so myself and others can share perspective on the concept of self growth in hopes that. One another's journeys would be relatable, establishes awareness, and inspires listeners to adopt, then maintain such behavior. The definition of self-growth is a process of developing new skills, attitudes, actions, um, or reactions that can have a beneficial impact on your life and increase your overall well-being. So with that, so so with that being said, um, I would like to introduce um, today's guest, uh, Martin Foley. Hello, Martin. How are you today? I'm doing good. How about yourself, Kite? Kite? Doing well. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Good to be a guest on the show. <laughs> what can you tell me about yourself, Martin? Well, like you said, uh, my name is Martin. You know, I'm from uh, Oakland, California. Uh, you and I came to meet each other through uh, through working at Market Hall, Rockridge at the Deli. But uh, yeah, man, I'm a uh, 23 years young, shining star. <laughs> nah, uh, you know, I'm just person. I wouldn't describe myself as too too crazy or anything. You know, I. Uh, Grew up in, uh, I was born in San Francisco and uh, my parents, my dad was a lawyer when I was little. So, uh, you know, he, he was a little bit, uh, a little bit bougie. We lived in Arinda for a little while, had fun over there, you know, until I was maybe four. I don't remember it too, too well, honestly. For those who don't know, you know, Arinda is kind of like, a, a, it's, it's a pretty nice area outside of Oakland. Uh, but yeah, when I was about four, I uh, moved over to Oakland, 
you know, really dug my dug my feet in before I started school or anything, which I think is big. You know, it gives you a nice foundation to uh, you know, you don't wanna you don't wanna be jumping around too much growing up, I think. So I'm glad I kind of planted myself there right when I was starting. Went to wow. yeah, yeah. Went to school around the bay, you know, ended up did did move around a good a good amount, you know. I've lived in uh Alameda, Concord, you know, Pleasant Hill, uh, Los Angeles for a little bit. Uh, but I mean, Oakland, I think, is the uh, it's the home base, you know, it's where all my friends are always. It's where I, you know, I've always had my uh, my main gigs, you know, whether it be school or work or whatever. Hmm. And um what would be your um, perspective on the concept of self-growth? Well, you know, I mean, it's a it's a broad concept. I think uh, I think people grow every day in ways that we don't even realize. You know, I think I think to the the word growth, you know, it can uh, it can be more complex than it actually is. You know, you might think it's just a kind of a linear path up. Uh, when I think in reality. You know, it might feel more like, you know, you go up, you learn some stuff and you go, you know, maybe you got too much on your plate. Maybe something goes on or whatever, you know, you take a few steps back, you know, maybe reflect on what you did wrong. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, it happens every day, I think, until I don't think it ever stops really people growing, it, you know, whether you want it to or not, you know, you're learning every day, you're watching and observing and uh you know, this self-improvement, I think, is, a. I mean, much like getting water, you know, it's something people just kind of want, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I think it's a lot of ways that, that people can grow, too. I think a lot of people that think a little more, uh, a little more literally, you know, uh, growth could be growth in career, you know, making more money. Uh, growth could be, you know, mental or, you know, spiritual, you know, getting yourself into a situation that feels better, that fits more with your, uh, with your lifestyle. I think uh, growth can be outward too, you know, even self-growth. But, uh, you know, I think once, once you get yourself to a good place, you know, you can start working on the people around you, start working on your environment, you uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a whole slew of opportunities to grow. You know, it's, it's so many things to do out there. You could spear fish, you could go skydiving, you know, you could write a book, uh, you know, it uh, never ends. Wow. Um, I, I hear a little bit of an echo. Um, let me see if I can try to address that. Give me one second, y'all. Yeah. Let me know if there's anything I could do on my end. Okay, great. Yeah. Let me know if there's anything I could do on my end. Okay, great. Okay, great. Can you uh, talk, Martin, real quick? Check, check, testing, testing, microphone, check, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun. Martin, real quick. Check, check, testing, testing, microphone, check, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun. Check, check, testing, testing, microphone, check, cinnamon bun, cinnamon bun. Check, check, testing, testing. Okay, let me see. I'm like, damn, is that what my voice sounds like? <laughs> it's like a loop. <laughs> Six. Hold on. Right. My voice sounds like it's like a, it's like a... <laughs> are, you, um, are you listening to the podcast um from YouTube or anything? Uh I'm not, no. I could try putting head in headphones. Maybe that'll that'll help it. Yeah, let's try the headphones. All right, I'll be right back. This is all a part of self-growth, y'all. Technical difficulties, but we'll figure figure it out.
if anybody in the chat hears uh, echoes, please put in the chat. You guys hear echoes. I got uh, I got headphones on testing. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Is that clear or, uh, or was it better with us? Yeah. All right. But Martin, you don't you don't hear echoes when I talk, right? Not on the Zoom, no. No, I don't hear an echo. Okay, let me see what I can do. This must be on my end. Oh, Matt says no echoes here. What's okay, up, Matt? Matt. <laughs> Shout out to you. Let me see. Cool. Let's see. Um, same as system. Speakers, um, microphone, microphone. Speakers. Check, check. Sounds good on my end. Okay. There's like a delay. I hear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. All as right. long as no one here echoes. Cool, cool. Man, so, right. uh, yeah, back to, I don't know, back to what we were saying. I think uh, yeah, it's, it's just a ton of ways, you know, I, I think it depends on your goals, too, you know. I think me personally, I had kind of in the past, you know, like past past few months, I think, you know, my life was a little bit cluttered, you know, some stuff like housing arrangement, you know, uh, scheduling, you know, a bunch of stuff that was a little more up in the air for me. But I feel like I'm smoothing it out right now. So, you know, it just opens up my day to uh I think growth, a uh, big part of growth is, you know, once you got free time, you know, then you can really focus on, you know, instead of like fixing something else, which, you know, that's growth too. But, you know, yeah, uh, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, bettering yourself. Speaking of, uh, you said something about fly fishing. Do you, are you, uh, would you consider yourself a naturalist? Oh man, you know, I think, uh, I think I have it in me. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't come as natural to me. And I think, uh, I don't know. I would love to learn. I was a boy scout for a long time. I used to love to go camping and hiking and all that, man, spending time in the woods, but, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, spending lots of time out there, I sort of felt like I was missing out on some other social stuff back in the day. You know, I was like, 12 13 14 you know going camping all the time thinking like dang I kind of want to go to parties or you know talk to girls and stuff so I kind of put that down for a little bit and try to focus on uh you know interpersonal relations stuff like that you know another form of intelligence but uh yeah yeah I, I would definitely uh consider myself a bit of a naturalist not as much as a lot of other people definitely Okay, and I forget I, I forgot to uh, add one more question. Um, how are you currently growing? Oh man, well I just moved into a spot of my own, uh, so I mean it's just a lot more responsibilities. You know, I'm I'm like uh, I'm cleaning, I'm cooking. You know, I'm thinking about getting a little kitty cat or something. So there's that. I think. Uh, you know, trying to trying to smoke weed less, trying to drink less that, that, you know, that's that's something I'm always working on for sure. Uh, trying to read more, you know, slow ways, really trying to uh, trying to connect with people. I think, you know, set set better boundaries so that I can be friends with all people. You know, I think that's a big goal of mine, being friends with everybody. I think sometimes you can run into somebody that uh, you might have, you know, disagreements with. Maybe, you know, you think, oh, I mean, this person are really compatible as friends. So you back off or, you know, you uh, you kind of don't etch out a little corner for yourself. You say, 
all right, you know, this person is doing this, so I'll do this. But I think there's, there's, you know, it's a lot of power in saying, like, I'm not going to do that, but, you know, we could still, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the line for myself, but we can still chill, you know? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a chill guy, I think. So sometimes when it's a lot of drama or a lot of, you know, people that are a little more upfront with uh, with having problems with people in the time in the past, I might have thought, ah, you know, it's a lot going on here. But I'm trying to work on, you know, just, yeah, you know, fighting through the uh, fighting through the messes, you know, clearing clearing the air for everybody, you know, communicating is key. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm curious to know. Um, what what inspired your current perspective um well what's the question what is what inspired you to get to where you are today ah oh, man that's a good good question i think uh you know just my whole life seeing and uh and observing people's lifestyles picking and choosing you know I don't know. I think uh, I think it happens a lot when you're younger. You know, you kind of set role models for yourself. Maybe uh, maybe an older sibling's got a friend that you think is really cool. You think maybe in a few years I'll be him. You know, I'll be that guy. You know, maybe you see an older person that's you know a little more successful. You think, hey, they were uh, they were where I was. You know, back in the day. I think uh, I think growing up, you know. Like I told you, my, my dad was a lawyer for a little bit and then, you know, he kind of had to stop being a lawyer. And I think my whole like childhood, it was a little bit, uh, you know, up and down with money and, uh, and circumstances and all that. You know, I would be in and out of private school. So I think that really gave me a perspective, you know, and I mean, being from Oakland too, having all this diversity around me, uh, it's, it's easier to know uh I don't know, like, like money chasing, you know, it seems pretty, uh, pretty obvious, you know, money's good. Money is a, uh, it's value, you know, literally. So you should go after that. But then, you know, you see some of these fools, they're like, uh, they're working crazy ass jobs. They don't even like their families. They barely even see them, you know, they're stressed out all the time. So they come home expecting peace, you know, little kid comes up trying to show them a picture they drew and, you know, dad's just trying to sit down uh, and do whatever, you know, I don't know. I think uh, I think I always had a pretty good picture, like the person I wanted to be, the stuff I valued. You know, I think uh, being good, living in the moment is big for me. You know, looking at what's around you, not thinking about, you know, where am I going to be three steps from now? You're already at a step right now. You know, how can you make that step good? So I don't know. You know, I think uh, I don't know, just meeting all sorts of people and seeing people doing good for themselves in their own ways, you know, being spiritually centered, happy, meeting goals. They're not feeling like they're getting fucked over by life. They, I mean, part of my French, you know, they're having a good time with it. I think uh, I think that that really inspired my uh, my goals in life. You know, I want to be a well-rounded person. I want to be a good member in my community. I want I think uh it was like a children's book. I saw a quote from once. It said, uh, are you happy to be there? And is everybody else, you know, happy for you to be there? I think once you check those off, you're in a good place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Um, yeah, I think, I think I've, I've always been curious to uh like know like where or how you got so um mature for your age and i think it demonstrates that age doesn't matter when it comes to um being able to grow yourself it's a matter of i think uh, a willingness to want to improve and um i think maybe environment like plays a role in that too that's why i was curious to know like uh what what inspired you i think you know it's possible it could have been your parents exclusively but it could have also been the various elements like you said being from oakland and having being exposed to a culture that's so open-minded and uh 
uh not uh what's the word uh divided and yeah i think that plays a role too because i think pe- where people are like like you know separate or you know willfully separate like i think those actions is based around closed mindedness it would seem um but i think you and i share the same type of uh lifestyles to a degree because it seems like we are committed to you know in, enhancing ourselves and i think that's why like our relationship when we were working together was just so good it was so easy and so simplistic to talk to you and i value like like where you were in your life and i think that's what attracted me to you as as a friend um man i really appreciate that yeah i thought i think i feel the same about you man you know you got to you know i was saying you know people find uh, role models for themselves in this life i think the way you you're great at fostering a community man you're a you know, I mean, going back to what I was saying, too, about, you know, if someone's not a little bit different than you, you know, that's not a reason to shy away. You know, that's 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 a bridge right there. That's something you can learn from. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it was, you know, I mean, yeah, environment for sure. I think part of it is, you know, I'm blessed to uh, I've had a pretty peaceful environment. I for sure, you know, I moved around a lot. It wasn't, you know, as great as some other people. It was a lot of fighting in my house for sure. but. I don't know. It's a, uh, I think, I don't know. You, you gotta be in a good place to grow. And, you know, when, when life isn't like that, you know, you kind of, you can kind of feel like you're just fighting to get through every day here and again. I think, you know, I recognize that in some people, I think, uh, I don't know, empathy too, you know, seeing that, trying to think like, all right, where's this person coming from? Why, you know, are they mad? Why are they mad? It's probably not my fault. They wouldn't, you know, no one wants to be mad. You clearly something, you know, happened that this person's mad or whatever. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I think, too, I mean, uh, maybe you could talk about your experience with it, too, you know, being from El Cerrito and, you know, living around the Bay and stuff. Uh, But I think, I don't know, you know, I was jumping around friend groups a lot. I uh, jumping around schools a lot. I think I, I made friends with a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I really don't think, I mean, there's bad people for sure. People do bad things maybe, but I, I, I'm kind of a lover of all people. You know, I'm a humanist. So, you know, I would go to a go Catholic school, hang out with the frat boys, you know. They, uh, yeah, I think they like, you know, really value uh, success, but then also, you know, really having fun, you know, uh, community too, having good parties and all that. I'd be making some crazy ass jokes, you know, then I was also friends with a lot of hippies, you know, it'd be real focused on peace, spirituality, meditation and all that. Be friends with, you know, fucking, uh, I'd hang out with a lot of like taggers and painters back in the day. And they, you know, that was a cool lifestyle for me. I think, uh, I really admired that. I still kind of do, but, you know, going out making art, you know, it's about, uh, that to me, that's really living in the present too, you know, cause you just going and, you know, beautifying the world. It's all about having fun. You know, you go out, explore, uh, you know, put beautiful colors up, watch the sunset and shit, you know, go for a honey bun for 50 cents, come back, you know, trying to, trying to squeeze everything you can out the day. It's <laughs> with a lot of skaters too, you know, they're, they're crazy as hell too. They're really focused on style, but you know, aesthetics, that's a big part of life, you know, I don't want to be in a, any ugly environment, you know, whether it's aesthetically or, you know, uh, ugly energy or whatever. I think the skaters had a good, uh, they had a good feeling like, all right, this is cool. or right, that's whack, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that, one commonality that we share is I think uh, we we are definitely like falls into that category of, What's the word? I think it's interpersonal. Is that the one where we're like the people smart or connects with like people? Hundred percent. I forgot what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I think interpersonal. That's interpersonal. Like, yeah, yeah. Intra is like inside. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think that one too. That one's weird because sometimes I feel like 
I don't know, y'all, I, I'm a bit of an energy matcher. You know, I'll get into a room and I'll try and feel out the vibe, you know, try and, uh, you know, see what it's like. But, you know, I think uh, there's some other people that, you know, they'll be feeling a certain way. They go into something and uh, they don't necessarily want to change it. I, I respect that, too. You know, staying true to yourself, protecting your energy. That's cool. But uh I mean, that's something I think I'm lacking in just because I like, uh, yeah, I like vibing with people, you know, I like getting on people's levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I noticed and the reason why I say that, that, uh, you, you have, uh, 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 what's the, uh, a heightened degree of interpersonal intelligence is because when I used to work with you, it seemed like people gravitated towards you in terms of wanting to communicate and uh, have conversations with you for sure it's like you know when, when people see you be like hey Martin how you doing good to see you you know and you know instantly you seem like you have that ability to have a, a a reaction that that will be pleasing to them and I think that's an ability or skill that not everyone has in terms of that degree um and I, i'm actually kind of curious to know uh was you know based on in intelligence in general it takes repetition and practice to enhance that skill so um i would imagine initially you had to be exposed to an experience to to having an awareness to grow that that form that area of your life um for me it was a matter of being around my dad who's extroverted and he liked to like talk to people or he likes to talk to people um sometimes too much because there have been times when he told me like oh you're we're gonna go to this movie at you know watch the matinee uh -huh. but before we go to the movie we probably stop at 7 11 <laughs> and like clockwork, you know, if somebody that's standing in front of 7-Eleven or in 7-Eleven that he knows, and then they start to get in the conversation to the point where we end up being late to the movie. <laughs> but, you know, I was aware of that. And, that, you know, it kind of frustrated me that he would, uh, you know, talk a little bit too much. But right. I did admire the fact that he had these these relationships that people like value um in terms of him you know knowing them and just talking to him and I was like wow that's a, that's amazing like you know I, I want to have that type of network too not not for just business purposes but just for the fact that you know you know I want to live life to the fullest and it's it's yeah I could like choose to avoid people but I mean that wouldn't like help to like enhance my perspective on life and the purpose of life and the meaning of life um so i see them as opportunities when i see meet a stranger or if i encounter a stranger like i'll say hi you know without the expectation of them saying you know anything in return but so with that being said um what like what would you attribute to your uh enhanced uh interpersonal skill set i mean lots of things i appreciate you saying all that i think uh i think you're you're sort of an example that that sets that for me though you know i think uh i don't know man you you probably got it in your blood i remember you telling me your uh was it your grandpa or someone had a store back in el cerrito back in the day i mean just you know sense of community chatting with people that i mean to me, that's better than the candy bar you'll get from the store. You know, you go see a movie. I think that movies give great perspective too. you know, seeing uh, seeing different stories, different different people coming from the minds of different people. You know, you might think oh, I wouldn't have made the bad guy that, you know, this probably says something about this guy's feelings or values. But uh, I mean, after a certain point, you know, you watch enough movies. Pardon me. You were. Uh, I don't know. You know, movies are great, but you, know, you 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 sit down, you watch three movies in a day and it's like, dude, there's a whole world going on out there that you just missed out on. You know, I think uh, 
Yeah, it could be annoying for sure. I think that's a good, uh, great quality your dad had, though, you know, saying what's up to people. I'm sure I'm sure people around him loved it, too. And I think it inspires other people. I think I feel like I've probably just been inspired by uh, a lot of people in my life. I think I, I used to be shyer for sure, though. Uh, you know, I jump around to a lot of schools. You kind of get into a, an environment where something's already going on. You think, ah, right, you know, they got their own thing going. Uh, you got their own thing going. We might as well, uh, let me just, you know, stay out of that, you know. Uh, but I don't know. You know, it's it's detrimental. You know, you're just missing out, really. It's, it's not good for anybody. You know, it's it's more comfortable, probably. I feel like a lot of a lot of younger kids are going through that right now, especially with like social media and everything. You see everyone else doing good, looking fire. You know, you just feel awkward when you get around some other people. And, you know, you, you've been watching YouTube videos for like, you know, two months straight. You know, of course, you're going to be awkward. You know, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think a big part of it, too. I, I don't think it's for everybody. Uh, I think, you know, it should be done with caution. but. I'm a believer in uh, in psychedelics or you know hallucin uh, yeah psychedelic experiences for uh, for mental stimulation and creating a they've done some research you know I think once you get to a certain age around like 18 22 your brain kind of it gets to like a a point where it's comfortable you know stops like growing yeah there's these neural pathways I guess which is where like information travels in the brain but uh, some research that says um, magic mushrooms, they can open that up and allow you to like relearn something that, you know, you might have really only been able to learn back in kindergarten, you know, when you're still so moldable and everything. I think it was one time uh, I had done some in Santa Cruz, we went to the beach, man. Like me, my friend, and uh, our other friend, and the two friends had dated, you know, they were exes, but I just remember the energy being so palpable or so, you know, so in the air, so like noticeable, feeling like, you know, maybe someone feels awkward, maybe someone's uh, mad, you know, and it's like, I don't know, you know, it's like, it's three, I try to imagine it like three monkeys on an island, you know, three, three people hanging out together you could kill each other, you know, you see, yeah, sure. You probably end up on top if you win, you know, you, maybe you get some, some monkey meat for two days or whatever, but you know, it's, it's not about that. I don't think that's just so, it's so primal. And, you know, you look at other animals, really, they're not really doing that. You know, monkeys don't fight each other really, unless they got a problem. I think people want to be amicable. It's just, uh, I don't know. You know, I think the, uh, the interpersonal and the interpersonal are mad connected just because you got to yourself know what's going on with you, how you're feeling, how that might affect other people before you, uh, I don't know, before you can make real progress on connecting with other people, with, I mean, other people that, that are different than you. Yeah, I'm going to turn the light on real quick. You got a little dark in here. Yeah. <laughs> I learned from personal, from like other podcasts, it's important to get, get next to a light. And turn it on before the podcast start. <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I would say after that day, I kind of just had a better feel for uh, for feeling energy, you know, feeling people out, realizing, All right, this person's not messing with this uh, this day, you know, this uh, hangout. It's not because of us necessarily. Maybe it is. If it is, you should be able to feel that, you know. But uh, I don't know. I, I think uh, you ever hear the word mindfulness? I think that that to me is is huge. Mindfulness and communication. Looking at what's around you. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, how people are feeling. Not, you know, thinking about people other than yourself. I think, you know, they, it, it'll do wonders for yourself, too. Because once you create a peaceful environment, guess what? nobody's yelling at you you know you could focus on uh on whatever mm, that's interesting yeah that's, a, that's an interesting take on it we um personality wise um who 
of your parents, which um, would be uh, parallel to your own? Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, I think a little bit of both. My dad, uh, my dad has a lot of a lot of hippie in him, you know, he, he kind of grew up in California and stuff. And it, it's funny because he, he did, you know, he's a lawyer later on and, you know, a bunch of stuff. He, uh, but I think for, for a long time, you know, he went to school in Santa Barbara. He uh, went to college in Oregon. You know, it was kind of, it was a chill time too, you know, I grew up during the seventies, eighties. He's a, uh, he's a pretty low key guy. He's pretty chill, pretty, not, not too quick to anger not too quick to uh, do anything, but, you know, a chill comes with its own problems too. You know, a chill person might be not doing nothing to another person. You know, I think mm-hmm. uh, my mom, she could be a little more, uh, I don't know, a little more, a little more fun, a little more, a uh, little, little less, you know, wanting to be comfortable, you know, or like, you know, wanting to get out of her comfort zone and stuff hmm yeah i think uh i don't know she's a little she's a little more hardworking than my mom or than my dad too i think you know my mom's a little she's a hard-working lady you know single mom doing all that but i mean i don't know i spent a lot more time with my mom so i would guess she rubbed off on me more and you know mm-hmm. i love my mom you know who doesn't uh but mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, for sure, I, my well, I I think I'm a good combination of both, but I lean more towards probably my dad. Um, my my mom was kind of like uh, she's very she's very energetic. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know that's not really me. Like I. I'm the type of person I try to avoid drama at all times. I feel you. Um, but I, I do get my my silly side from my mom for sure. Um, mm. My imagine my my imaginative side I get from my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, but my, my my drive when it comes to like getting the job done or uh trying to achieve objectives that's like some from my dad like he's he's a he was a soup he was a supervisor at comcast for several like i think over 20 years oh wow um he was great at his job to the point where uh his the people that he was he looked over you know they just enjoyed him being a supervisor uh, and uh in my experience working with people in the supervisor position that were quote unquote over me, um, I know that uh, having that interpersonal intelligence matters to make the workflow just go well. Hundred um, percent. Some people, if you're not a people person, like I do, question like why would you want to apply to be a, a supervisor because you're communicating like on a daily basis uh, with other people. So if you are just in it for the money, like you're probably not going to enjoy the experience as a supervisor. Yeah. Um, I think, I I think I will be a good supervisor um, because I enjoy the interactions and um, I have a sense of awareness, like what I say um, matters. And I try to like be mindful of, the things that I say to people outside of work or in work because um, it, it can have an impact on people and, and their reactions too. Would you agree with that statement? hundred percent, man. Um, yeah. The whole, whole job is supervising, you know, you're kind of just there to, to supervise people, you know? And if you're an asshole, you're coming at it with bad energy, dude. Yeah. Of course people aren't going to like that and that's going to create more problems. Yeah. I think, I think you would be a good, uh, I've never, I feel like in, you know, in our times working together, you for sure, you know, in a good way, you know, you'll see something that I'm doing wrong, you know, you know, and it, you know, you just bring it up in a way that you could tell you're not angry. You're not like saying it to feel superior or power trip or whatever, you know, it's just a, 
I don't know. You know, it's a, it's, it's like a gentle confrontation. I think, I think you're really good at that. Uh, you mind if I ask what, uh, your, your dad was at Comcast. Was he, uh, what, like supervising, was he going around to, uh, like installing at people's places or was he more like an office guy? Excuse me. You, you said, was the question, um, where the supervisor that I encountered, was it in an office setting? Your uh, your dad when he was a supervisor for Comcast. Oh yeah, he was in a um, it was a it was a mixture. He was a, I would say probably percentage wise, maybe like twenty percent in the office, but like eighty percent he was in the field, like you know driving around in the trucks, overseeing that operations were getting done from yeah. like a house to house basis with the installers. Now you got to be a cool person for that, dude. You know random person walking in somebody's house to uh to fix the comcast it's either gonna be mad awkward you know silent for for two hours while you know a homeboy is hiding in his bed his bedroom peeking out every once in a while to see if you're gone or whatever you know or you know <laughs> you treat it normal you feel out the energy you know you say all right i'm in this person's house i'm not gonna bother them too much you know you know i'll, I'll see i'll see how much they uh you know they're looking for uh, interaction right now or whatever I don't know. I think sometimes, dude, you know, those those jobs where you're, uh, you know, there's a bit of awkward silence. I think that that's it leads to a lot of healthy growth, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think like a dentist or a barber, they get way better conversations than like a cashier. You know, you're there for, you know, 30 minutes, two hours, however long it is. But, uh, you know, versus a cashier, you know you really only got like 30 seconds to, you know, make a, make a connection, you know, it's a, I don't know. I think, uh, I think certain lifestyles lend itself to it more, you know, in an environment, you know, it's all part of it. You know, say you were a, say you're a hunter, you probably spend a lot of time out in the woods by yourself, you know, maybe you're out in Alaska or something, you probably spend a lot of time by yourself. Sure. You get good at naturalist, you know, sure, you get good at uh, other types of intelligence, maybe uh, kinesthetic, maybe you're down up there doing, you know, 100 push-ups every morning. But, I mean, you, you ever notice, you know, it's people that are, like, super, super jacked, man. They, uh, I don't know. I mean, not to generalize, they, you know, all types of people out there. But I think a lot of those people, you know, they're focused on uh, getting ripped, you know, their they're, uh, they're bod and stuff. They, uh, they can, uh, A, either get, you know, they're not spending as much time with other people. They're not uh, not connecting as much, or you know, maybe they're uh, they're not. I don't know. I don't know. I think you know every every type of lifestyle has its uh, has its ups and downs. You ever yeah, think that I, that maybe I agree with you? I mean, like when it comes to energy and and our usage of it, like we can overuse it and so it's a and i think that's why awareness matters because if if we're overusing our energy i feel like it's due to us not being aware of of um us over exuding like you know all things in moderation as people would say like I've recently decided to work out because I had an awareness that, you know, I was starting to gain weight. <laughs> so um, I, I decided, you know, I'm just going to commit to to working out. Yeah. Um, based on that awareness. Um, but there's there's times when I'm working out that I can feel like internally like, OK, that's enough. Yeah. Um, you, you know, know like, what, too? Huh? I bet I bet uh, leading up to that, you know, when you were uh, maybe putting on a few pounds or whatever, I bet your uh, your intrapersonal relation or intelligence was fire. You know, you're probably mm -hmm. taking good care of yourself, real spiritually good, you know, probably taking so good care of yourself. I mean, you know, you know just treating yourself nice that, uh, you know, you forget about other stuff. But my bad. Go on. No, no, no. You're right. I agree with you. Um, but like you said um you know maybe it is maybe when people are in the gym for long periods of time like maybe that is an indicator like 
uh, you're you're overdoing it. Um, yeah. But I think sometimes people go to the gym because they they're seeking out like connections and bonds with people who are at the gym. Um, but I mean, if you're not putting forth an effort to interact with them, you're basically trying to like, in a way, gambling that, oh, by going to the gym and working out, maybe somebody else will like approach me and talk to me in the gym, which is like why I'm here. But when that doesn't happen, <laughs> you're so focused on like that possibility that you you start to get distracted from the fact that you're like working out too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel it. I feel especially, it. Yeah. Especially from like a, 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 a woman to man, like a woman. I mean, a man trying to like talk to a woman or wanting to be in a relationship with a woman. So they go to the gym because they know women might be at the gym. Mm hmm. And so, like, oh, they might like my muscles, so maybe I need to work out a little bit more. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. It's a cycle, man. I mean, that'll happen everywhere, dude. You you go to school, you know, thinking, all right, man, I'm gonna learn a, you know, I'm gonna learn a, I don't know, you know, algebra or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Then in comes little Raquel with the with the nice jeans on, you know. You start thinking, <laughs> you know, you start thinking, damn, how can I get with her? Uh, you know, you entirely miss out on the the point that you were supposed to be there. But I mean, you know, I think humans are interesting creatures like that. Like uh, I don't know, you know, there's I think we we kind of get on a little autopilot that it's not necessarily bad to me. You know, I think, uh, I think the human system, it's got sort of a self-correctiveness. You ever hear about like, you know, Tesla's with the AI, you know, they, they drive for a while, you know, maybe they scrape up against a wall for a little bit, you know, after a little bit, they'll be like, oh, I'm scraping up against this wall. Let me move. You know, I think, you know, likewise, you go to the gym, there's a beautiful woman around, you know, sure. Yeah. You know, you go to class, you know, beautiful woman around, God damn, you know, I might as well. I'm here, you know. I think, you know, that that's probably smart, dude. You know, it's you know, it's uh you might you might be on your deathbed thinking about, you know, you got 16 degrees, you hadn't talked to one girl, you're thinking, ah, you know, what did I do? You know. <laughs> but you know, I mean that that'll also lead to, you know, you get too girl crazy, you uh you fall off on grades, you know, you uh get too focused on your workout clothes, you know, you stop even doing workouts or whatever. Uh, you know, I think, I think you'll, you'll, you'll notice and you'll learn from that. You know, you'll think, all right, let me turn it down. You know, let me, let me focus on my studies. Let me focus on my, uh, my routine, you know, it's back day. Let's get it. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all a process. It's all a process. I think, uh, I don't know. I think humans are pretty forgetful creatures too, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll be finding myself, uh, you know, making the same mistakes I made before or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, you know, humans are simple animals too. Who's to say we shouldn't lean into that, you know, do what feels natural. I, I guess mindfulness is the key to all of that. You know, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think the key, my dream lifestyle I kind of want to live like a golden retriever, you know. I think golden retrievers, they've got great bodily kinesthetic. They got great naturalistic energies. Sometimes I'll like, uh, I'll step outside and be like, I don't know, you know, after a long time, like, you know, I'm being inside and I think, damn, this is nice. I needed this. Mm -hmm. I don't really have that in my brain naturally where I'm thinking like, Oh, you know, I should probably go for a run today. Golden retrievers have that. Golden retrievers have that for sure. That's interesting. I didn't know that about golden retrievers, Martin. <laughs> Lassie, man. Lassie. <laughs> speaking of uh speaking of going outside. Uh-huh. Speaking of going outside, I was curious. Um, if any, what what would be some uh Look, destinations that you uh, deem valuable to yourself? Man, number one, 
Santa Cruz. I mean, you know, number one, just first that comes top, top of mind. I got a lot of good people out there. And I think the town itself, I believe in places having energies, you know, uh, you know, not just people, not just, uh, you know, objects or whatever. I think uh, Santa Cruz has good energy. I'm rarely having like a sad day in uh, in Santa Cruz, you know. Uh, plenty of parks in Oakland, you know, that are good. Uh, I think, uh, man, I don't know. I think uh, downtown Oakland and Chinatown as a whole, just so much going on. It's an environment that you can kind of walk through. You don't have to, it's not quite small town vibes. You know, every person that you see, you're not stopping and having a conversation with but you can kind of observe everything around you, choose what you interact with. I like that. Uh, man, Lake Merritt for show, you know, beautiful day. You go out there, everybody that's out there is having a beautiful day as well, you know. Uh, I think, you know, that, that place, I mean, you know, every place that's popular, you know, take First Friday, for example. You, you know, everybody wants to get out there. You get all sorts of energies, dude. You'll walk past a couple screaming at each other. You'll see, you know, <laughs> 40-year-old couple, you know, eating a corn dog or something. Uh, I don't know. I think I like places like that that have, like, a, a lot going on. As for spaces where I like to just kind of go and reflect, be by myself. Oh, man. I don't know. I, uh... I used to like going for drives in Arenda a lot when I had a car. They got some nice hills, not too crowded. You go around by yourself, put some uh, put some uh, some good music on. You know, nothing uh, nothing too extra. You know, I don't know. I think uh, I spend like a good amount of time uh, by myself. I think it's it's peaceful. You know. So, I don't know. It's a good question. I've been spending a lot of time on my balcony here that I'm in this new spot, man. You you got to come by sometime, by the way. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice. It's just uh, you're outside, nice and clean. I got some plants out there, but uh, it's chill. Yo, know, guess what happened today too? You were uh, you were uh, you still you still working at a uh, station? Yeah, you were uh, working the. Uh, 50 Cent Buster Rhymes show? No, I didn't. Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. But I called into KMEL 106.1 and I won tickets today. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I never, uh, never happened to me. You, you ever, you ever call into a radio station? No, nah, I never won tickets. Nah, man. You should try, man. You should try. <laughs> I never did it till today. So but, I was, uh, Going back to the, the, the your destinations, um, you know, I'm, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and just like I think, based on our relationship, I found those destinations to be interesting um, because it seems like the things that we are attracted to um, tend to be like reflections of our of ourselves. And when I say reflections of ourselves, I mean like internal reflections. Um, so like when I think about Santa Cruz, I think about an, an area where it's like a mixture of urbanization and naturalization, beaches, um, just calming because I've been there and, um, it's an enjoyable destination. And then I've been also to Lake Merritt. Um, it's also a, a nice place to be, to, you know, go on a picnic, um, mm -hmm. just sit by the water, um, it's it's a it's a relaxing environment um yeah so i find that to be interesting as far as the destinations that you chose or deemed to be like places that you 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 enjoy being at um mm. would you would you would you agree like if these places were reflections that they would be reflections of yourself i think so definitely yeah i mean i think uh I think too, you know, places resonate with you or they don't, or they resonate with you at a certain level. Japan Center in uh in San Francisco, I would go to as a young boy. I think instantly I knew like, oh, I like this place, you know. 
got a lot of art, got a lot of culture going on, a lot of different people, you know, beautiful food and stuff. I don't know. I think, uh, I think part of that too, though, is just, you know, these are magical places. They, they've been around before I was here, you know, been around before plenty of us were here. I think you go there and they rub off on you, man. Like I can remember my first time going to Chinatown. I thought it was crazy. You know, you see all these little shops, they're selling like firecrackers next to like plums, you know, they got all sorts of shit. Uh, I don't know. It was a, uh, that, that really attracted me. I think that, that too was sort of similar to like the tagger, you know, Oakland graffiti vibe, you know, it's just all sorts of stuff going on. You got a group of friends. Nobody really looks like each other, you know, a bunch of randos. Someone's got pink hair. You know, it's funny. You ever go to Stinson beach? Oh, that Stinson beach the other day. Um, I think I've been there as a kid, but I don't remember it. Yeah, but I don't know. It's like kind of just this beach town. But I think most of the people that go there, they're from outside areas. Like no one really lives in Stinson and like goes there. So, you know, I was at the line for the snack bar and it was like just so many different types of people, dude. You know, you had like this little uh, ratchet fighting with her boyfriend, you know, a little <laughs> group of six friends, you know, it's a couple old ladies there for uh for stuff it's funny because you know you see these people bring their own energy spend a little time on the beach they fucking you know they come back feeling good you ever you know that feeling when you you go take a trip you go visit someone and you kind of get on a different schedule or different uh different wavelength just from you know being in a different environment you're like i'll go visit a friend in la come back feeling like I have all these ideas of how I want to live my life now, just seeing someone else do it, you know. I think variety is the spice of life, too. Granted, you know, no one really no one really sticks with a, with one thing their entire life, you know. If they do, you know, some might say they're missing out, arguably. Uh, but uh, I don't know, man. You know, I think uh, I sort of lost my train of thought there. Oh, we were just yeah. talking about destinations and how they can reflect ourselves internally. Yeah, yeah. I don't need, you know, I'll come back from a trip and you just feel different. You know, I, I think people and environments are kind of constantly in like a battle of, uh, not even a battle, it's a sort of dance. People affect their environments, the environments affect the people. I think, uh, you ever seen The Departed? No, Maybe. I haven't. It's a good one, but uh, it starts out Jack Nicholson. He's like a mob boss and his character is saying, I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me, <laughs> you know, and I, I respect that. You know, that's some boss shit. Uh, you know, he was, uh, hey, you know, I, I, that, that's cool as hell, you know, protecting your energy, you know, being like, all right, I'm going to, you know, decide how things go down here there's another side of that where it's like you know i am water i am whatever container i'm put in you ever hear that bruce lee quote you know be like water Mm -hmm. you you know water is free you know you put water in a cup it becomes the cup you put water on the ground it becomes the ground that's another side of it but i i think it's a it's a dialogue you know you don't want it to be all the environment dictating it the environment doesn't want it to be all you dictating it. Neither do the people around you. So, I mean, you know, it's a, you feel it out and you, you find a, a beautiful equilibrium, you know, where uh, you're kind of both learning from each other. I think. I agree. I think, I think life is ebbs and flows. I say that phrase because people, some people relate to that. I honestly don't relate to that phrase because I don't really you know understand it but I feel like there's an alternative phrase that I think basically means the same thing I think life is a, a matter of gives and takes like I give you take you give I take totally, I think man. that's a more relatable thing to me um and also going back to the destinations that you were talking about that you uh tend to gravitate to yeah one thing that um i found interesting is that the destination the destination that you name like japantown chinatown lake Merritt, santa cruz these are areas where 
uh, generally people inhabit. And mm. so um, from a re reflective context, maybe that those destinations symbolize yourself as far as like being wanting to be amongst other people versus being by yourself. Um, I 100 percent agree. Uh, you yeah. Agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know, man, unless I'm bringing a book. But I mean, books, that's written by a person. You're hanging out with a book. You know, you're kind of hanging out with the person, you know, feeding off of their energy. I don't know, man. If I'm spending time alone, I like to uh, I like to be looking at art. You know, I like to be reading. I like to be listening to music, you know, stay connected with something for me. I don't know when I'm like in a park by myself, it's it's meditative, which that's its own beautiful thing, too. But excuse me, but. I don't know, man. I'm just, uh, I love the people around me. You know, I don't, I don't think I'll, I could ever do like a, a desert island. <laughs> I think I would invent people like, a, like Tom Hanks and, and Castaway, you know? Yeah. I'll put a bunch of sand in a pile and make some friends, you know, put a little kelp on their hair and everything. Uh, man, Matt, Matt made a good point. He was saying, uh, you know, I was saying water, you know, fits everything it is, a uh, container it is in. But then water also reflects, which is, yeah, it's, that's a great point. It's a great point. Yeah. You know, it's, it doesn't just become what it is, but it shows, you know, the thing that it's becoming, you know, what's up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you, Matt. <laughs> mm. uh, as far as myself, I think some like destinations that I enjoy going to is uh, there's a, place called point panol in the mm. city of panol um it's like a it's, it's a huge park with many trails but the trails lead to different destinations like i'm talking about like different environments one leads to a beach one one leads to a pier one leads to a marshland and um i think that probably um reflects me because i enjoy diversity okay. um i i don't think i would be comfortable with like just being in one place one location uh for the rest of my life it's, you know i think you know there's there's or like to 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 like use to be more specific like i think some people intentionally choose to be amongst uh, a specific ethnic culture, like um, African American. Some African Americans choose to like move to places where there's only African Americans, and you know, some people of European American heritage seem seemingly only want to be amongst those type of people. Oh yeah, you see it with white people um, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So for me, like, I just think it's sort of like inhibits the 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 overall experience of existing to like choose to be uh you know s segregate myself from certain experiences it doesn't have to necessarily be amongst people but just like certain experiences like you know maybe maybe some people like going to the casino and mm. like that's 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 what they do they you know <laughs> seven days a week Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um but um I like to switch it up. I try to be intuitive and I'm a believer of like uh I think I think life like pretty much like experiences like I tend to I think I attract anyway. So like to like I feel like when you're trying to like control control the external world or control your environment, that's kind of like um just Hold, like kind of like inhibiting your growth it would seem would you would you agree with that I agree for me for me I would say you know everybody's got their own journey and I think uh I don't know I've got some friends that are well adjusted they they be talking about like forming a uh, commune you know like, like a you know you get a few houses big old plot of land and you know you just get you know some friends over there you know everybody's growing stuff or whatever that to me, I don't know. I would not want to just choose six people to spend the rest of my life with. You know, there's a million of people, and I'm sure the six that I choose, they got their own people. 
I think, you know, as uncomfortable as it can be, you know, we, we belong together, you know, meshing and uh, inter- interacting and all that. I think, uh, I don't know. I think there is a, there's a lot of value. I, I respect people's choices for, uh, you know, wanting to be, uh, you know, you, you get into a, another type of rhythm. I think, you know, being around uh, people that are similar to yourself, you know, you know, getting, getting in with a friend group or some people, some people you don't really, you kind of know well, you know, but yeah, I, I do agree. I mean, for me personally, I just, I don't know. I'm such a, you know, I, I like talking to people. I like, I think they say it's a Scorpio thing, but I'm sure, uh, you know, it's, it goes with a lot of signs, but they say we, uh, we like to like truth seek, you know, I don't know. I like, I like figuring people out. And uh, if I feel say like a family trip, you know, it's just a different vibe, you know, you know, everybody and it's great. And I love it. You know, it's great. You know, you're, uh, you're all clowning on each other. You maybe go do activities because you kind of got all the uh, you got all the uh, getting to know each other out of the way. You already know each other. Now it's time to like you know go jump off some rocks or something. I think there's a lot of value in that. But for me, and I think you know part of it is just the environment. I'm around so much that I still don't know about. I'm still learning every day. You know, it's I would feel I think if I just spent time with a a little group of friends, I would feel like I'm entirely missing out. And I know that they are, you know, just cause, you know, I don't know. I got friends that, uh, that aren't as, uh, you know, they might be social, they might go out a lot, but they're not talking to different types of people, you know? And it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I respect it. Yeah, I respect everybody's choices. But for me, I like, uh, I don't know. I care. I, I think, I I don't want to say like, uh, me personally, I care so much that I could never do that. You know, they don't, they don't care as much as me. I don't know. (laughs) You know, (laughs) uh, I I just like, uh, I don't know. I like shaking it up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, in terms of your relationships with your friends and family, um, what how can I phrase this for those particularly those who no I don't want to be like selective um yeah so in general the people that you have relationships with um what what is like quote unquote the the glue that like maintains the bonds uh that you have with them Man, I think with a lot of people over time, you know, in addition to other things, it just becomes time. You know, I see my bro that I, you know, I've been fucking brothers with since we were like, you know, eight years old. And I'm already, you know, just by seeing him off a recognition, you know, I'm tapped in like, all right, that's my dude. We've been through a lot of stuff before. Uh, That's a good question. That's a tough question. I don't know. I mean, I think you know, there's, there's stuff that everybody likes in other people too. You know, I think, uh, me personally, I value when people, I don't know. Yeah. I think I kind of like, I really get along with people like you, you know, who are like open to all stuff, but I, I find myself like, uh, I don't know. I find myself sort of amazed when I find some people that, uh, you know, they're just combative, you know, I don't, I don't know, just because I'm not that way. Like some people that are just so protective of their, their own energy, they'll fight with people, they'll get in arguments all the time, they're willing to make their, their lives that unpleasant, you know, just to hold their ground. You know, it's that I see that and I think like, all right, what's what's going on with them? You know, why are they what do they got going on that, uh, you know, I, I respect that, too. I think uh, a lot of people it's just not problems, you know, as simple as that, you know, it's people that, uh, you know, my bro Hank, for example, we, we were friends. I knew him like a while, a few years. We never had problems, but we were never really, you know, like, you know, kicked it much or connected that much. But then like, you know, just after a little bit of time, we started saying like, Oh man, like, 
I don't know. You kind of you kind of remark on the differences, you know, and it, and it makes, you know, that beautiful individuality even, uh, even more important. But uh, I don't know. I think the people that I meet right off the bat and that I really mess with, I, I'm attracted to. Uh, I think. People that are a little more or less logistic, you know, I think I like people that are a little more feel with their heart, you know. They uh, a little more sensitive, a little more wavy, maybe or a little more, you know, angry. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. You know, I don't know it when I see it. I don't know when I see it. How about you? I think. Uh, what was what was your your upbringing like? What, what were your elementary, middle school, high schools like? Were you you have like a tight group of friends, or were you kind of friends with everybody? Mm. a little more of a loner i i think uh initial growing up as a kid um i think i was to be honest superficial um i think it was just due to the fact that um i kind of would like you know allow myself to be conditioned to think and behave that way i mean i was <laughs> a part of an era that had a lot of great fashion as far as like you know, I'm from the time when the Jordans, like, you know, oh, they were like super popular. You know, the uh, the patent leather Jordans, the Tommy gotta... Hilfiger, <laughs> big uh, old jerseys, yeah, yeah, Tommy Hilfiger jerseys, the, the man, the starter jackets. Oh yeah, and it was it was Super like for sunglasses. kids, man, all of that. It, so as a kid, it it was tough to um, resist the temptation to like one to try to get all that stuff and also have an understanding that, you know, this stuff is supposed to be practical. You're supposed to be wearing this so that you could be warm during the winter, not so oh, much yeah. buying it because you're trying to get like approval or get like acceptance from your peers when you're at school. And so for me, I fell into the temptation of wanting these things so I can get up, so I can get accepted or get like validated by, people and i mm. think th um i ended up you know attracting similar people who were thinking the same way and i gravitated to those type of people and it took like trial and error for me to realize like um well i don't really like like the you know i'm not really relating to the behaviors of these people as i'm like hanging out with them as far as like wanting to get more stuff more stuff um, I kind of like want to, you know, subconsciously, I was kind of like, you know, this is cool, I guess. But ultimately, I do want to try to find my purpose, especially like when you once you get to like that senior year and it's like, oh, shit, like high school is almost over. Like, I need to like, what am I going to do? Like, right. what direction do I want to go? And like all, you know, the Jordans and all that stuff, like the idea of getting more of those that kind of goes out of the window because the people that you're wearing it with, um, you're probably not going to see them anymore. So it's like, you know, uh, yeah, like, mm, I don't know. And so, yeah. And it's like, you yeah, know, for sure. Once I got out of high school, like I just found, you probably can relate to this too. The, the relationships that you had in high school, we kind of like grew apart. And I think because, I think the high school, just the high school environment, it kind of like encourages that type of superficiality to a degree. And it's kind of subtle, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So everybody's uh, competitive, you know, everybody's trying yeah. to be cool. You know, you're trying to yeah, you're trying to fit in all that. Yeah. I feel that for sure. I feel that for sure. I don't know. I think uh, I see sometimes I see a lot of parallels in the uh in the 90s early 2000s to now you know we're, we're sort of in a bit of a, a flex era dude you see rappers flexing their chains that wasn't as big of a thing i feel like in like you know 2008 you know they're sort of anti-chain you know baggy jeans are back all sorts of shiny stuff jerseys are coming back right now i don't know i think uh especially with instagram and all that dude people are more than ever focused on just like looking good flexing you know showing off the uh the uh you know the brand names and all that uh i don't know i think if you're into that that's cool too you know i think uh you know fashion that's an art form it's a form of self uh self-expression and all that but 
I know what you mean for sure. It, it, once, if you're doing that, you know, all that, you know, it's only eight hours in a school day. You know, you go in, fly, time will run out. You think, mm-hmm. all right, shit, what am I going to wear tomorrow? You know? Yeah. But say school were like, uh, you know, say you were in there for a while, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. all right, you got the jersey. What else you got? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That was a, uh, that was huge. Yeah, that was huge. So I want to ask you a question. Um, I, I heard an interview uh, not long ago. I forget who the individual was, mm-hmm. but he was just talking about um, profet- like he was just talking about his profession mm-hmm. and what caused him to stay consistent with maintaining that uh, that career path. And for him, it was a matter of how did he phrase it? He said pretty much the experience came to him versus him seeking out the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he was probably like he was exposed to an experience in that particular field. Um, He wasn't looking for it. He just like, you know, maybe his dad took him to a place and based on that experience in the present moment, he was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Um, and so from that experience, he decided to go on and, uh, choose to like study things that were like contextual to that experience. Mm. And as he started to learn more about that experience through his own independent research and studies, uh, he started to feel more and more fulfilled, uh, and, and related more to that experience that he experienced as a kid. Oh yeah. Um, so I know that it's possible regardless of your age to not experience something uh similar to what he suggested, but I found it very profound and when he said what he said, I reflected on an experience that I had as a kid and when I thought about that experience, it it, it kind of like reinforced my career path, which is making music and songwriting. Mm. Um, it it kind of like just gave me more strength and more determination and more confidence and to main to maintain consistency to do to do what I do. And um I'm hope I'm hoping what I say uh can inspire others to maybe reflect on some experiences that they've been through and and they may have overlooked um so that they can have maybe uh some certainty of like what if they what they want to do as a career path if they if they don't uh if there's no certainty right now as far as that um with that being said um what have you experienced an experience in the past that you felt like you weren't seeking out? It was just like you, you were exposed to it and it just like, uh, you resonated. It resonated with you in terms of like a profession. That's a great question. Uh, man. Yeah. I think honestly, I think the things that will resonate with you most in life is stuff that you don't seek out, you know, just because, you know, if you do seek it out, you already kind of know that you want it. When you get it, it just feels like validation. It's not really a revelation, you know. You're not thinking like, oh, this is cool, you know. I think, uh, man, recently, you know, I started working in uh, catering at Market Hall, doing a lot of kitchen shifts, uh, speaking Spanish, you know, I fucking – you know, chopping vegetables, cooking and stuff, plating. That was something I really, like, never, I don't know, I've never considered myself, like, a a chef or even, like, thought that was something I wanted to get into, man. But uh, it's, and it's not even still, like, you know, thinking about the whole idea of it. I'm kind of, you know, I'm uh, I'm lukewarm on it, but feeling it, you know, going in there and doing it every day. I like the lifestyle, man. You know, it's a, 
it's fast paced. There's a bit of pressure that I feel like is almost innate to the human experience that we haven't had since we were like, you know, hunter gatherers and stuff watching out for, uh, you know, stuff in the jungle, you know, we kind of need a, a sense of uh, danger and stuff, which, you know, intrinsically the human mind will think, you know, why would I want danger? You know, why would I want, you know, I want comfort, you know, but then you spend, you know, fucking 30 days in an apartment with a bunch of thrill pillows, you know, you're lacking in vitamins, you haven't gone outside, you know, you probably, your serotonin levels are all weird because, you know, you know, there's no sense of danger or whatever. I think that, that has gotten, uh, it's gotten into me. And I think too, is a speaking Spanish dude, like, uh, you know, it's a whole bunch of fools in the kitchen there, you know, it's a entirely different lives than the one I've led, you know, they might, they might've came from a different country. They might've, uh, you know, you grow up around a different community. It's a whole different set of rules, you know, different, uh, different cultures, customs, and, uh, dude, it's, it's cool. It's cool to me. You know, it, you see someone, to me, when I was hanging out with the frat boys, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a white boy myself, but uh, I don't know, dude. It was just like the the way you go after it when you're like that, it's very disconnected from the universe. I don't know. To me, it's like uh, you go to a club, you find a girl, you know, you dance. I mean, and, you know, I'm simplifying it. Maybe I'm taking the magic away from it, but you know, it's just it's so streamlined, dude, especially with like Tinder, dating apps and stuff. You find a girl, you already know, you guys are both attracted to her. You get you get together. There's no sorts of magic in the air. There's no sorts of like, will they, won't they? No sorts of um, possibilities, you know, possibilities and uh, not knowing what's happening. I think people, there's another, it's another like urge, you know, I think stemming back from the hunter-gatherer days where it's like, you know, you it makes sense to want to be comfortable it makes sense to want to be you know you have food secure you have you know you have your romantic partner secure you got entertainment your your temperature is good but then you know you're sort of just it's like in the matrix when you're you know you, uh, you know covered in fluid you're connected to a machine you know just getting fed what you want there's something in the struggle is that uh mozzie always says the beautiful struggle man I, I agree with that you know sisyphus rolling this the ball up the stone you ever hear about that it's a the greek myth the guy like every day he's pushing the rock up the stone people would think like oh man that's punishment or whatever but you know he's you know torture would almost be like you know just sitting there twiddling your thumb for you know eternity doing nothing you know this guy's got something to work towards i think that that's that's something i think is uh is good you know i mean maybe maybe i've just conditioned myself to think that because uh that's the nature of life you got to work you got to get out there and do that shit but uh i don't know man i accept it i accept it with open arms that's cool. That's interesting. I appreciate you sharing that. Man, thank so, you. So um, we reached a part of the show uh, where we uh, discussed the multiple intelligence theory. Mm. For those who haven't seen previous podcasts, um, I am an advocate of the concept of the multiple intelligence theory. This theory was created by Howard Gardner, a theorist. And to describe what it is, um, he theorizes that we as individuals have at least nine different intelligences that we possess. Um, and this is like an alternative theory that has been uh, presented compared to the mainstream adopted uh, theory when it comes to intelligence. I forget the name of the theorist who created that one, but... Mm -hmm. The alternative one suggests that we have, I think, three main intelligences, uh, mathematics, uh, linguistic, and I think science. Mm. And so uh, based on that theory, we when we uh, grad, uh, when, when we're seniors and we need to take a SAT exam, um, it suggested that 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 the SAT exam is based around that theory. So that's why we get tested on math, writing, 
uh, uh, I mean, English and uh, uh, science. Right. But Howard Gardner in the multiple intelligence theory suggests that we have uh, more than that. But those three that I mentioned are also uh, a part of the the nine intelligences. The reason why I, why I uh, promote this uh, theory is because I think sometimes people can be uh, have low self-esteem because maybe they're not good writers, mathematicians, or, uh, you know, have a knowledge of science or chemistry, what have you. Right. Um, but that's okay because it's possible that you may have, uh, heightened degrees in the other, uh, remaining, um, what is it? The, the, the remaining six intelligences. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I want to encourage people to uh, research the multiple intelligence theory. I will be showing the diagram uh, tonight. Um, it's very intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I will show that now. I'm going to share right. my screen. Okay, so this is the multiple intelligence theory. Uh, uh, so let me lower this. So as you can see, um, there is naturalist, musical, logical, mathematical, existential, interpersonal, bodily, or kinesthetic, linguistic, interpersonal spatial and to give you a um a, a brief summary of each one uh a naturalist oh firstly i want to say this too the theory suggests that we all possess all nine of these but what will, de what will determine um our skill for each one is determined based on our practice and repetition for uh, each intelligence. And to give you an analogy, um, Kobe Bryant, Stephen Curry are good, uh, are, you know, uh, really good basketball players, not because they were, you were born Stephen Curry or Michael Jordan, it's due to the fact that they were in the gym you know, putting in thousands of hours of practice to get to where they are today as far as their skill set. Right. And so if in theory, based on this theory, it's possible for us as in individuals to enhance each uh, of these intelligences and degree, should we commit to uh, practice and repetition? Um, so the naturalist uh, intelligence is people who enjoy the outdoors, um, know how to make a campfire, uh, uh, enjoy like being around animals, things of that nature. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Corwin, uh, Bear Grylls, those would be individuals who have like a heightened a natural naturalist intelligence, musical, um, a Kanye West who who makes really good music uh, knows how to make really good compositions and production mm -hmm. uh, math teachers are <laughs> have heightened degrees of the mathematical logical existential is is interesting um people who are say that like they can see spirits or uh b believers in God uh the unseen realm of the spiritual realm uh, my cousin said, you know, she she attracts ghosts. Ghosts want to interact with her. Um, that's probably because she has a heightened intelligence of the existential. Um, interpersonal, sensing people's feelings and motives. Um, when we were in high school, we had people who, uh, students that would be considered popular kids. Um, they tend to attract 
individuals or, or other students or their peers, you know, they people always wanted to be around them. Um, they probably have a heightened sense, a heightened interpersonal intelligence, mm. um, linguistic people who are authors and writers who sell, you know, uh, best-selling authors that would, you know, that would encompass linguistic interpersonal, um, Martin, what, what, what would be an example of interpersonal intelligence from your opinion? Who, I think, who would be an example of that? Man. I mean, I think, uh, I think you, you would be a good example. I think, uh, asking questions, it's a, it's a, it's a big help in that for sure. I think there's people that are super blessed, just not even asking questions, you know, just kind of reading people. Uh, if I had to think, man, you remember, uh, Alex Murphy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he was a real, he was a real people person. Uh, I think Pablo too, you know, his people, they can be, I think interpersonal There's different types of it. I think, uh, I think you and me, man, I, I like to get down to the root of it. I like to, if I see something, I'll, I'll ask about it. I think, uh, I think maybe you do the same, but I don't know. There's, there's some people that they'll, they'll notice something and they'll just kind of, they'll see it and they'll move on. You know, they'll, they'll kind of take stock of it. I think that, that, uh, that's a skill too. That's a skill for sure. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's plenty of people from my past that I can think of. They're just, they're, they're good with people. I don't know. I think certain, certain, uh, certain exes in the past, dude, I've had, uh, it'll be girls that are like, you know, they'll, they'll point out some shit that I don't even know about, or like, you know, it'll be someone you're super close with and, you know, you know, whole time you, uh, I don't know, you've been dealing with something and, you know, you mentioned that and they'll be like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like, really? You didn't, you didn't pick up on that? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, I think, yeah, you and I got a good feel on that too. You know, just, uh, being good, connecting with people, seeing, uh, being able to sense where they're at and meeting them there. Yeah. I agree with you. And I think, you know, we, once again, I'm just giving examples of people who like would like exemplify these, these various, uh, intelligences. I think, I think probably a lot of us can relate to interpersonal intelligence, especially when it comes to like, uh, cultivating, like our own well being. like, you know, some, some, some of your friends are quote unquote friends, associates, who you hang out with, they probably be like, Hey, you know, let's go get a drink at the bar after work. Right. But because you're aware that if you, if you drink, you know, you could be hung over tomorrow and you don't want to experience that. You're going to say no. Mm -hmm. So I think by saying no, you're doing that because you have, you have, uh, you value your interpersonal, uh, you value yourself, you, you value your well being. So therefore you have a sense a heightened degree of interpersonal intelligence compared to some people who say, yes, let's go get the drink. I'll 100%. be hung over tomorrow, whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know what I said before, it's a constant battle, but they're also kind of in a, they're kind of related to each other. The, the interpersonal, you know, seeing what other people are feeling but then the intrapersonal, seeing what you're feeling. I think you kind of need both of those in check to go out and have a good time. I think anybody, you know, you might, uh, you might feel what other people are feeling, but you go out and you got you to gotta know what you're feeling too, or else you just end up with someone else is doing all night. And, you know, everybody's on their own journey. You know, what, what they're doing, that's for them, you know. You, yeah. you guys might be at the same place. You might be in similar places, but... Uh, I don't know. You know, you got to be aware. All right. This person's doing what I want. You know, I'll get on their level for tonight. This person's, uh, this person's not doing, you know, what I, what I want to do right now. Let me, uh, you know, let me know how much to, uh, to mess with them tonight. You know, I don't, I don't know. I think, uh, dude, the intrapersonal is tough too. Cause, uh, I think, the intrapersonal understanding yourself, what you feel and what you want. It can almost be, uh, I feel like Obama talking. I feel like, 
And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, Obama, he's always, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the interpersonal, and, uh, understanding yourself, uh, <laughs> But I don't know, you know, I think uh, you understand yourself too much, what you feel and what you want. You can kind of close yourself off to any sort of, I don't know, people use the word chaos in a negative way. But I think, you know, there's probably another word for chaos that's uh, that's more positive. But uh, to me, chaos is good. You know, it's just different people operating at their own levels. You know, I don't know. I think... Uh, they're both they're both real important honestly i think interpersonal as more of an interpersonal person i've struggled in the past with uh understanding myself you know knowing where to uh knowing where to cut it off knowing the type of life i want it takes time to learn that i think you know yeah i agree with you and then finally we have spatial intelligence um Individuals who have careers as interior designers, um, architects, they uh, would exhibit um, a heightened intelligence, uh, spatial intelligence. Oh, by the way, someone told me this isn't pronounced spatial. It's called spatial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it I looks spatial so. to me. It looks like it, yeah. So, so yeah, that's the breakdown of the multiple intelligence theory. Uh, Martin, uh, if any, which one or more uh, of these nine um, do you think you have high degrees of intelligence and which ones would you say are lower that you would like to improve and why? That's a good man. All right. Well, I think musical, you know, I always had a good sense of music. I'm not a musician myself, not not currently, but uh, that one I've never really had trouble with. The naturalist, you know, as much as I, I associate that with uh, going outdoors, going camping, I think naturalists can also be sort of interpersonal, you know, reading someone else as an animal, you know, how do they feel? Are they irate right now, like an angry chimp? Are they, you know, a cuddly chimp right now? I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, er, reading dogs, I've never been really a dog owner in my life, but I've been dog sitting recently. And I feel like being around a dog, dude, they, you know, they're real naturalists. They understand uh, living things. I mean, you know, they're living things themselves, but uh, you know, understanding its needs, I think, takes you a lot closer to, uh, to earth and, you know, what, what all of us as animals need. Spatial, I'm not, I'm not too good at, I don't think, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I guess it, directional wise or, you know, aesthetic wise, I've always kind of had to like make myself be saucy, you know, I don't know, like aesthetically, I, I've never really cared about clothes as a young man. It took me, it took me, uh, I had to like teach myself to care. Now, linguistic is interesting because I think communication is key to so much stuff, uh, you know, like telling someone what they what you feel hearing hearing what someone else feels that's that's huge that's huge and i i think i'm all right but i i can definitely grow with that now bodily kinesthetic on the other hand you see these skinny wrists man i could use some work on that for sure <laughs> i think uh that's another golden retriever one where it's like uh I don't know, man. I've been working on handstands and push-ups and all that. I, I like it. It feels good. I want to I wanna get more into it, but I've just never been uh, too into it. And then logical, mathematical, that's sort of one to me that uh, I've always been kind of kind of blessed with it. I, I feel like I'm pretty good logistic-wise, but sometimes I wish I wasn't. You know, sometimes I wish I was a little more uh, maybe – passionate or stuck in my ways or something where you know i i don't know i respect someone that goes out and they're not having a good time because for me i'm always going to make sure i have a good time 
but that's sort of, you know, staying in my comfort zone, you know, going out and having a good time. I respect people that, you know, they just go out there and they, they go with the flow of the universe. It might not be a good time, you know, but uh, existential, I feel like I've always had a good grasp on. I mean, for me, that's just, you know, you're on this earth, you know, make sure you're having a good time and then extend that to uh, making sure your environment's having a good time. The people around you are having a good time. I don't know. I think, uh, I, I mean, all of these, I think I could grow on. I'm always growing for sure, but I would love to get a little more, uh, I don't know, as bad as I think it is, a little more stuck in my ways, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing that. Uh, for me, musical, I feel like is a heightened intelligence for me. Mm. Um, existential. It's high, interpersonal. I enjoy uh, interacting with people. Um, interpersonal, mm-hmm. linguistic, linguistic too. The ones that I want to improve is spatial. Yeah. Um, mathematical, and. I'll take that back. Interpersonal, I still I still kind of struggle sometimes with understanding myself. Um, but uh, yeah, so the ones that I want to improve is um, mathematical and spatial. Um, the other ones I feel like I've been able to heighten in degree over time. Um, yeah, so. Mm. That's our uh, multiple intelligence theory uh, corner for the <laughs> show. That's the same. I'm, ex- <laughs> I'm going to exit out of the screen share. All right. And uh, we have reached the conclusion of uh, episode six of uh, the Journey of Self Growth podcast. Um, I may take. Uh, a couple of weeks off because um i had there's some big shows coming up um my my uh my side job is a stagehand and so uh, i need to make myself available for those shows um if if um if i am available to do the next podcast it will be two weeks from now and um which i hope you know i hope to do but if it doesn't happen two weeks from now, it will happen uh, sooner than later. Um, this is something I enjoy. I enjoy the conversations. I enjoy the experiences. Um, this is also, you know, something that I didn't uh, seek out. This is something that, you know, I attracted um, through a dream. I think this is a a, a spiritual experience and um, people who, you know, are, you know, find value in this show similar to myself. I think it will be resourceful for all of us um, in our growth as individuals. Um, Martin, uh, you have any parting words? I mean, man, I yeah, I I'm looking forward to the next episode. I'm thank you for having me on, and I think uh, I agree with you. I think this is something you're good at. I think. Uh, I don't know, man. You're you're a good talker. You're a good talker. I think uh, this yeah, is a cool, cool venue for uh, for communicating, for learning. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for uh, for tuning in. You know, I'm Martin. You know, I feel like uh, I don't know. I've been I've been watching the chat. Y'all some real ones. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you for having me, Kui. Yeah. This is this is great. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so with that being said, um, I hope everyone will enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at K E T E dot music, um, where you can also, uh, see, uh, future advertisements for the podcast. And if you want to follow Martin on Instagram, uh, his, uh, handle is in the description below. Um, 
So, yeah, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night. All right. Bye, guys. Better, Kiwi. <laughs>